it's cyber time. It's all coming together. The cyber truck is really coming. Yes, it is. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. As a reminder, uh, this is the full version that goes out on Friday on the second channel, My Tesla Live. And if you're seeing it over the weekend, it is the condensed version. It is whichever one you see on the screen. Quick thank you to newest Patreon, Chris. Thank you. Uh, your support is what absolutely keeps the channel running because uh, only about a third of my income comes from YouTube. So yeah, did you know? No, Cybertruck production is not being further delayed. There was this uh, great story on Reuters, whom I used to respect quite a bit until they got a little too into the money. They paywall things now, and uh, they've gone a little towards the clickbait direction. They cited two experts with inside information that said, volume production, not until the end of 2023. Unnamed reports. Right, volume production. We've always said initial production in the middle of the year, volume production at the end of the year. That is not changing. So we know where it's going to be. It's going to be in Texas, because they're already tooling. See, Texas is big enough. If you look at Shanghai, the factory in total, for all of it, is only uh, 9 million square feet for all the buildings combined. Might be a little over that now. But about uh, two-thirds of that is Model Y production. Uh, that means, you know, 5, 6 million feet for Model Y. In Berlin, uh, same kind of deal. The whole factory is Model Y, 5 to 6 million square feet. I couldn't find an accurate number, a recent number anyway. I saw numbers that were desperately, desperately wrong. Two million, that's not accurate. Uh, but they are big enough at five million to cover Model Y. So if we look at Texas, we'll see in this Southwest Prairie, as I've been calling it, loading docks have been added, they've been cut in, and they are uh, now um, full. The loading docks, the receiving uh, bays are full of trucks bringing in equipment and supplies. This whole area is going to be for Cybertruck. Now, Texas is only 9 million square feet, so is that enough? I mean, if we're putting 5 to 6 million towards Model Y, is 3 million really enough for a high volume vehicle? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is because the Stamping Cathedral has been having improvements made inside to expand its capacity. It was only using about a third of it before, that area you see over there. And the Cybertruck famously does not use very many stamped components. Man, you can see the progress. They are really cracking in there. They don't use much in terms of stamped components. The origami style design for its Cybertruck is revolutionary. If you're not stamping and you're not all the panels, we know that on the Model Y, just removing the back bottom removed 170 pieces the front probably about the same maybe a few less the whole outer shell so you've got less stamping you've got fewer assembly robots the assembly robot line is quite long minimize that are these stamped my theory is that these will be cast that these door arches will be cast i could be mistaken but even if they're stamped they have the capacity it doesn't cut into the space that they already have and of course, there's no paint shop because the Cybertruck can get in any color you want as long as it's stainless. And not only does a paint shop take quite a bit of space, it costs a lot of money. In my recent interview with Sandy Monroe, I asked him how much is a paint shop and he said three quarters of a billion up to whatever you want to spend. Three billion? So it's not just space, but it's money. And if you're only going to make a few million of them and it costs a few billion, you've got a thousand dollars in cost per vehicle just for the paint shop, not even counting the paint. So that's going to be a big money saver, time saver, and space saver. So we know where, we know how, but now we know that. These two Cybertruck builds were spotted at Giga Texas. These are typically brought in when you start working on the line to dial in your tolerances. There are prototypes you bring in. We saw this in Berlin when they were getting ready to start Model Y production. They brought in bodies in white from other facilities. They brought them in to compare them to what they're making to get them right. 
there were rumors at the time, well, they just brought him in for the uh, quarterly financial call so that they could have him on display. Well, we didn't see them because that's just a call. That's not a video event. And we haven't seen any examples in Texas of having two on display at once, at least not in a very long time, maybe not ever. No, these are brought in for tooling. We also know uh, that the Cybertruck's Gigapress is on its way. Uh, Sandy uh, Monroe went out and saw it in Italy. And he uh, asked them questions and published the answers in ways they didn't care for. <laughs> what did you think he was going to do? And we know it's on the way. And we've seen reports that it has made it as far as Houston already. It may already be inside. It may have been brought in on a day when uh, there were no drones in the air. That is possible, however unlikely, because it's a big boy. It is a process to move something that's that big. Now, they're going to need a second one for the front end, right? Well, I asked Sandy, could they just use the 6,000-ton press since the machine, the front casting is going to be smaller, at least in terms of material, than the rear casting? Could they just use the 6,000-ton press? And Sandy said, no. They could use an 8,000-ton press, but I imagine they would just get a pair of nines so they've got redundancy. So if one is offline, they can just swap out the dies. And you can just swap out the dies and have a stockpile of castings. We know that because we see it all over the sites all the time. Tons of extra castings made in advance so that if the line goes down for maintenance or tooling or whatever, they've got a, a supply on hand. We know that the vehicle's being tested Cybertruck spotted being tested with additional cameras. And personally, I hope that they, uh, that they keep this. I think this is a good looking configuration. It really steps up the cyber aspect. No ITs, of course. But it's out for road testing. That's not something you do when you're years from production. That's something you do when you're about to enter production, which suggests that this may be the final design we know that the windshield wiper katana is going to remain on the vehicle. This one has side mirrors, which are, as I understand, still currently required for manufacturers. They're working on getting that revised. Um, and Elon has stated that these will be very easy to remove aftermarket. And Tesla was granted a patent for Cybertruck folding seat design. Oh, look, cyber seats. And this patent is very, very interesting. These are seats. This is a folded seat. Seats, yeah, they fold. So I'm not sure how much patent you need for that, but they've got one. And they've started hiring. The hiring has begun. Not for line workers, that would be very exciting, but for things more important. Dimensional engineer, body and white. Manufacturing operations leader, Senior Equipment Engineer, Dimensional Engineering Manager, Equipment Engineering Manager, Senior Equipment Engineer Robotics for Body and White. So there will be some robot assembly, of course, because these particular items are too heavy to lift individually. What do all these things mean? If we look down, the Dimensional Engineer will work with production teams and report to the Dimensional Engineering working closely with sustaining engineering to understand, help define, and ensure lines are following body accuracy, fit gap, and craftsmanship specs. What are the specs on fit and finish? Loose. <laughs> nah, ITs. ITs, the new factories are doing better. But what do these jobs actually mean? What is a dimensional engineer? Dimensional engineering is the engineering process used to control product quality and the cost of production for dimensional products. From the design phase to the manufacturing floor, dimensional management is a crucial part of product lifecycle management. Engineering manager job description, it's uh, not as difficult as you might think to figure it out. Proposing and managing budgets, supervising work for multiple teams, planning and executing strategies for completing projects on time, could use that. Researching and developing designs and products, you get the idea and supervising all of the people in your very small team who are working on that. So this might be something pretty good to have at this point. This tells me that they are on schedule. If you'd like to see a Cybertruck yourself in person, the Peterson Museum in Los Angeles is going to have an exhibit coming up where they will display a number of unique vehicles. The original Roadster, Tesla's one millionth vehicle, the Nürburgring Plaid, 
the Cyber Quad, the Cyber Truck itself, models 3 and X original prototypes. We can get a good look at them and see how they've subtly changed over time. And I'm going to be at this event. I will be uh, driving down to meet uh, Jeff uh, in uh, the San Francisco area, and we will be driving down together in his Model X. So I will get to experience the yoke myself and tell you if it's a hit or a miss. I'm very excited about that. I will also be going to the LA Auto Show. I got my press credentials today, so I'm very excited about that. So if you're at either of those events or just in the greater Los Angeles area, maybe we should meet. I plan to be there roughly the 16th through like the 19th or 20th. Probably the 20th, but I don't know how much time I'll have on the 20th. And the other big thing is tomorrow at 2 p.m. on the second channel, which is, I mean, if you're watching this, you know this, I'll be interviewing uh, Randy Kirk, author of The Elon Musk Mission, Making the Future Awesome, How Tesla, SpaceX, The Boring Company, and Neuralink Are Changing the World. This is co-written with Lars from Best in Tesla. Be nice. He's, uh, he's very good. And he's also the best-selling author of The Elon Musk Method, which is uh, not, a, not a form of birth control, because that doesn't work. We found that. Because the best part is no part, the best process is no process, and the best kid is nine kids. So it'll be interesting. I don't think that question's going to come up. But with that said, <laughs> we have fun. Thank you to my patrons, as always, who get early access, bonus content, generally an ad-free experience, and more bonus features are coming soon. I do hope to have a Discord channel set up, hopefully next week. Um, but I've got a lot to do before I head out of town to go down to the LA Auto Show and the Peterson Museum. Very exciting times. I've got a bonus section coming up here. Uh, well, there it is, and there you go. If you enjoyed this, uh, consider watching the full 30-ish minute version over on the second channel, My Tesla Live. That's where we do the live stream every Friday at 7 p.m. and a podcast with Bear from Bear's Workshop every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific. So, what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me your thoughts, your wisdom, your juicy brilliance into them in the comments below, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I simply cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity-flop.